All right, sample space. This section is gonna be on sample space. We have a handful of multiple choice problems that will blow through fairly rapidly. And then uh, we'll work in FRQ. So in this case, the number of points scored in the game has a probability distri distribution below. So I could get, if there's a 40% chance I'm gonna be a loser and get no points. There's a 30% chance um, I'll get one point, and there's another 30% chance I'll get two points. 30 plus 30 plus 40, 100%, that's good. So no, the number of points obtained in one game is independent of the number of points in a second game. When the game is played twice, the sum of the sum of the points could be 0, 1, 2, or 3, or 4. If y represents the sampling distribution of the sum, so we care about the sum when the game is played twice, and anytime you're doing something twice or repeating something, a sample space helps a lot. So I could get a zero and a zero, a zero and a one, a zero and a two, and you should practice writing those out over time. Well, the sum of zero and zero is zero, but to do that, I had to get a 0.4 and a 0.4, which tells me that this sums up to. 0.16. The next one, I could get a 0, 1, and a 1, 0, because those sum to 1 right here. And there's two, a 0.4 for the 0, a 0.3 for the 1, 0.3 for the 1, a 0.4. So this is 0.12 plus 0.12, which sums up to 0.24. I'm going to drop, drop down to the end really fast, because I have two twos. That's going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, which is 0 0.09. These two, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3, that's 0 0.09, and that's 0 0.09. So 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09 is 0 0.18. And this last one is the time-consuming one, which is 0 0.4 and 0 0.3, which is right there, and that's 0 0.12. A 1 and a 1, well, two ones is 0 0.03. And then a two and a zero, a two and a zero, so 0 0.3 and a 0 0.4, that's also 0 0.12. And when I sum those up, actually that's not 0 0.03, that's 0 0.09, excuse me. This becomes 0 0.33. Now, real quickly, if I were to sum those up, 0 0.16 plus 0 0.24, it needs to be a valid probability distribution. But when I do that, I should end up with one whole to make it a valid probability distribution. Now, what they said is what has the greatest probability? It turns out the greatest probability is getting two points, which is what we have right there. Uh, okay. Okay, so each of the face of a fair-sided dice, a six-sided number cube is numbered with one of the numbers one through six with a different number appearing on each face. Two number cubes will be tossed and the sum of the results uh, of the numbers appearing on the faces that land up will be recorded. Here's the key word, O, oh, two. As soon as I see two, I'm going, oh, I'm doing a sample space. And they're looking for the sum because sometimes they subtract, sometimes they do different things. What is the probability the sum will be four given that the sum is less than or equal to six? Basically, we're looking for an intersection over given. So we probably should start off with, what's the likelihood that um, the, the sum is less than or equal to six? Well, one and six is too big, but one and five is just right. So one and five, two and four, three and two, Oh, excuse me, less than or equal to six. Excuse me, I got off a row. Boom. There we go. So if I count those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wow. I missed three, three, didn't I? Thank y'all for being polite. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. So 15 of them are six or less. So then I need to look and go, okay, what is the probability the sum will be four? 
Well, that's one, three, two, two, and three, one. That's these right here. In that case, I have one, two, three over 15. They were nice and didn't reduce it, but I wouldn't have been surprised if they had reduced it. The next one. So, continuing with sample space, the distribution of colors of candy in a bag as follows. If two candies, oh, we got two again, are randomly drawn from the bag with replacement, what is the probability that they are the same color? People go, is this really a sample space problem? And the answer is yes. I got lots of students that get stuck on this because they don't go, oh, brown and brown. Well, the probability of getting the first brown is 0.3 and this probability of the second brown is 0.09. I mean, 0.3 as well. And the red and the red. And they, then they go, oh, so all I had to do was 0.3 squared, 0.2 squared, 0.2 for the yellow, because this is essentially red, yellow, I mean, excuse me, brown, red, yellow, green, orange. And that's exactly all we did was say, oh, the probability of getting two of these is 0.1 times 0.1. And if you set up that little sample space and go, oh, it's, I need a brown and a brown. Well, the probability of that first brown is 0.3, the probability of that second brown is 0.3. People get that problem right very easily. So again, we're doing something twice. So set, setting up a sample space makes a lot of sense. Okay, so here we have a sample space FRQ. Die, uh, die A has four nines and two zeros on its faces. Die B has four threes and two elevens on its faces. When either of these dice is rolled, each face has an equal chance of landing on top. Two players are going to play again. The first pl player selects a die and rolls it. The second player rolls the remaining die. The winner is a player whose die has a uh, higher number on top. So we're rolling two dice. So we need to look at a sample space. So in this case, I have die, I'll put die A here. And on die A, it says I can four nines and two zeros. So zero, zero, nine, 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 nine. Then I have die B up here and it has four threes and two 11s. So one, two, three, four, one, 11, and another 11. So when we roll, if he if A rolls a zero and B roll, and this should be B, if A rolls a zero and B rolls a three, B wins. So B is gonna win all of these because it's three beating the zero. Over here, the nines beat the threes, so the A's win. And over here, the elevens beat the zeros and the elevens beat the nines, so the B's win all of these. So when I look at that, I go, okay, how many times? First off, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are 36 rolls. The probability that A wins is one, two, three, four, 16 out of 36. which is about 44%. Oh, the attorney just showed up, got all the fours. The probability that B wins, if I counted all the Bs up, I find out that I have 20 over 36. So 20 divided by 36 is 0.5555. Well, with that being the case, I would select B. Because it has a higher probability of winning.
and you have to make the statement. Right? So the next part, suppose that uh, the player using die A receives 45 tokens each time he or she wins the game. Um, so player A gets 45 tokens. Um, um, how many players must the player using die B receive each time he or she wins the game in order for this game to be a fair game. So I don't really have to give an explanation. I just need to show mathematically what happens. So in this case, 16 over 36. In the long, because what I'm calculating here, and I should have written this down, the expected value is NP. So 16 times 36 times 45 tells me what I expect. Every time I play the game, it tells me what I expect to get. So 16 divided by 36 times 45 means when player A plays, player A expects to get 20. Well, I need that to equal player B. But player B has a 20 out of 36 chance. So player B is 20 out of 36. And I need the expected value of NP to equal to equalize this. So I need to figure out how many coins we're going to get. Well, so 20 equals N times the 20 over the 36. And I obviously messed, yeah, no, that's correct. So when I solved that, I ended up getting 36. So what that means, player B needs to get 36 tokens if player A gets 45 tokens. Because when I multiply these two together, 16 over 30, that gives me 20. And if I come back over here and I go, well, what's 20 times, or excuse me, 20 over 36 times 36, that also equals 20. And so they're the same. So I should say for the game to be fair, Player B should only receive 36 tokens. So for the game to be fair, player B equal should equal 36, get 36 tokens when they win. So believe it or not, the pinata problem is also really a sample space problem. So a pinata is a container filled with toys and candy and is broken open by hitting with a stick. The drawing above shows Sophia trying to break the pinata. The probability she will break the pinata on the first hit is 0.4. She will continue to hit the pinata until it breaks. If she does not break it on a particular hit, the pinata gets weaker, and the probability she'll break it on the next hit is 0.2 greater than the probability than, than the probability in the first hit. For example, the, if the pinata does not break on the first hit, the probability that it'll break on the second hit is 0.6. Calculate the probability that Sophia does not break the pinata on the first hit and does break it on the second hit. First off, probability of, so basically here's what has to happen. We need a not break followed by a break. Well, the first, the probability that she breaks is 0.4, so the probability of not breaking is 1 minus 0.4. And they tell us that this next one is 0.4 plus 0.2. So that means that this is going to be 0.6 times 0.6. So the probability she breaks it on the second one is 0.6 or is that 0.6 times 0.6? So this is 0.36. The probability she breaks it on the first one 
is 0 0.40. So we're good there. So we're going to have to keep practicing that particular pattern of not break, not break, followed by a break. And as opposed to spending a lot of time talking about it, here's what we have. Probability of breaks on the first one is 0.4. The probability it doesn't break and then breaks is one minus 0.4 which is 0.6, we just said. And then the add the two together is 0.6. That gives us the 36 that we have right here. Well, then the next time is like, well, if it doesn't break then, it means it didn't break on the first one and it didn't break on the second one and it did break on the third one. So here's what we have, a not break. Well, not breaking on the first means it's 0.6 again. Not breaking on the second is one minus the 0.6. And then we have, this is a 0.6, and so I have to add 0.2 to it. 0.6 plus 0.2 is 0.8. I multiply that out, I get 0.192. So I'm going to pause right here because I should have already asked questions. Let me do that. So the question is, is how did that pattern really work? And maybe this will help a little bit more. The probability that it breaks on the first hit is 0.4. And so that's easy. We're done if it breaks on the first one. Yay, there's a 40% chance of that. But if it doesn't break, we need the complement of 0.4, which is one minus 0.4. That's 0.6, and that's a not break, so that it'll break on the this second hit. But they said that it increased the probability of a break increases by 0.2. So I add 0.4 to the plus 0.2, and I get 0.6. So that's the probability. If I multiply these two things together, I guess the probability of breaks on the second hit. Well, this is already a not break, so I can just bring it down because it's not breaking on the first hit. But now I need it not to break on the second hit, which means I need the complement of what's above it. And the complement of 0.6 is one minus 0.6. But to break on a third hit, it got weakened. So 0.6 plus 0.2 is 0.8. And so if I multiply this times this times this, I'm going to get 0.192, and that's the likelihood that it breaks on the third one. And then on the fourth one, I already have a not break. That's good. I already have a not break, so that's good. But this break needs to be converted to a not break. And the complement of break of, of 0.8 is 1 minus 0.8. And I add 0.2 to that, and I get one whole. And then I multiply all of these out. And that will take care of that. And I end up getting 0.048. And if I add all those values up, I actually get one whole. Now, it's possible you make a mistake here and you want to give up. Can you? I can't do part C. And the answer is absolutely you can. The reason why is, well, I didn't get the right numbers. Well, then write some numbers here. Just make sure they sum up to one whole. I don't care what they are. They can be completely wrong. They can be all the same number as far as I'm concerned. But at least write numbers here because you can get part C right. Because part C says calculate and interpret the expected value. Well, the expected value is x, the x value times the probability plus the x value times the probability plus the x value times the probability plus the x value times the probability. And if you do that, you get your calculation correct. And then your interpretation is in repeated sampling, we expect it to take 1.88 swings to break this type of pinata. And so whatever value you had here, you're going to put there. All right, the part about Sophia taking pads is probably not right. It may have been Leah Thompson. I don't know. Anyway, 